everyone and welcome to your weekly horoscope for Monday the 11th of November going through until Sunday the 17th of November 2019. Thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure to be with you today. What I do in these weekly horoscopes is I look at what the planets are doing up in the sky, what energy they form and how that applies to us here on planet Earth as above so below. So these readings apply to all signs of the zodiac, they're for everyone who watches and my horoscopes are based on UK time. So take that into account when you're listening to the times here. Um, I've had a look at the week and what I noticed that really popped out at me is that there are going to be a lot of people involved in your life this week. It's going to be very busy. Even if you're totally isolated, you will most likely get a visitor. And there's a there's a there's an undercurrent of connection to and with other people and isolation and being by yourself and trying to find a balance. So having your own private time and personal time and feeling good about that and being with others when you want to, but not being forced. If you see what I mean. Okay, so let's see which days support you and which days you need to kind of watch out for a little bit. Monday the 11th of November, we've got Mercury transiting in front of the Sun. Okay, so you'll be able to see a tiny dot moving across the Sun. Next time it happens is in 2039. The the Mercury transit is most viewable in North America and it's going to last about four to six hours. So it's a tiny little dot. You'll still have to like use equipment and stuff if you really want to see it. But also this transit, remember Mercury is in retrograde in Scorpio. So it appears to be going backwards. It's like a mirage. It's like an illusion. And in Scorpio, it's about diving down and trying to get to the truth and when you have illusions and mirages down there it's very difficult to suss out what's right and what isn't. So on Monday the 11th with this transit there is the potential for kind of skeletons to tumble out of the closet today because the taboo things and the private things and the things that you don't want others to know about the things that you're going to take to your grave they can be revealed today. You can actually let go of those today. Some people hold on to these things so much that they lose control and the thing itself starts to control that person. So let's say siblings, two siblings, two girls, they grew up together. Let's say there was an accidental death. One of the siblings feels guilty. She feels like she caused her sister's death. That guilt, if she, she's got no power over that guilt. It will consume her. And this day is an opportunity to take a feeling like that and to share it. You can really be open with someone today. So choose wisely who you're going to be open with. If you struggle to speak to therapists, or 12-step groups or support groups of any kind because you feel like you can't speak or you don't have the right to your own opinion or this is so shameful that you're going to take the secret to the grave with you try try again try speaking to your priest your your um, sponsor your spiritual mentor your guru um, your 12-step group, your therapist. That girl, the sister, who had nothing to do with the accidental death of her sister and who blames herself and is guilty, that guilt holds her completely. The only way to let go of that is to meditate, to hand it over to something bigger because guilt is a useless emotion. It's a waste of time. You can, you can make things better, you can, you can try and make amends, 
But guilt is just you're sitting there and you're just feeling guilty about something that's never going to change anyway. So it's pointless. It's a waste of your time. So if you're someone who's really closed up like a clam, today is your opportunity to let go of some of those things that have been torturing you inside and eating you up inside for a long, long time. And you can finally open up today. It's your opportunity, okay? Tuesday, the 12th of November, we have the full moon in Taurus at 1.36 in the afternoon UK time. I've made a separate video on the full moon in Taurus. Full moon obviously happens every month, but um, it changes sign. So when the full moon is in Taurus, it showers us with Taurus energy, which is about structure and beauty and sensuality and security and money. Have a look at the video. I go into a lot more detail because the moon forms certain aspects with other planets which affect this. At the same time, Mars, the male principle, is in Libra, a sign it doesn't like to be in because it has to be considerate and nice to people and it has to think about other people rather than just itself. That sextiles the lucky planet Jupiter in Sagittarius. So Tuesday is a great day to really enjoy the fruits of your labor. So if you possibly can take the day off and enjoy that you've worked so hard and enjoy, you know, most people work and work and work so that they can have a place to live and that they can provide for their kids. But you, we hardly ever sit back and say, wow, look at all of I've achieved. I've got this house with these amazing kids. Oh, today I'm not going to do anything and I'm just going to enjoy this and be conscious and aware and grateful for all of these wonderful things that I've got in my life. So it's, it's a really chill day. It's a good time to connect with other people and to enjoy their company. So Tuesday total connection and really super super easy during this full moon and it's really a, a, a fun time it's it's a time to celebrate so get together with people on tuesday you know spend an evening together have a meal it doesn't have to be super formal or complicated wednesday the 13th of november we've got the moon going into gemini at 8:47 in the morning the moon is how you feel internally and in gemini it's it's inquisitive it's optimistic it's curious it wants to communicate it likes to communicate it is adventurous fearless uh it wants to try out different things it's ready to experience it wants to learn and speak and add something the Gemini moon sextiles Chiron and Aries. So if you communicate too much and too loudly, there's the potential to get hurt. Mercury in Scorpio sextiles Saturn in Capricorn. Saturn is the planet of security and structure. And a sextile is a harmonious relationship. So the communication planet works well with the structure of your life. And it forms a positive trine to... Neptune in Pisces, the planet of imagination, dreams, and intuition. So on Wednesday, what you can do is you can listen to your feelings and you have enough energy and wits about you to actually put those things into practice. Because Gemini is all about walking through a new doorway into a new activity, some sort of new action, speaking, a new speech, whatever it is. So really get ready to, to feel super excited on Wednesday the 13th to have a lot of energy. And for example, if you've always been drawn to open, opening your own shop, today is a great day to start that. If you possibly, possibly can, try and put off all the signing, all the legal stuff, 
until the 20th of November when Mercury goes direct again. But if you don't have a choice, because, you know, we can't live our lives based on when Mercury goes direct and when it's retrograde. We still have to live and pay bills and all of that stuff. If you do sign up for a lease or you start a new business or you buy a house or you rent somewhere, really make sure the contract, read everything. Like, for instance, when I was in Brighton, um, when I moved out, I read the contract. <laughs> when I moved out, I was looking through it at the end. And at the end it says, um, we don't think there's any potential risk. It was worded very dodgily, so they wouldn't have to take responsibility. There's, there's probably no risk of catching Legionnaire's disease in this flat, because we've had legionnaire's disease happened here in this flat before but it's sorted now and i i looked at that at the end and i was like if i'd known that at the beginning would i have been so eager i mean i didn't catch legionnaire's disease thank thank the lord but that's the kind of thing that happens during a mercury retrograde you don't notice the fine print so make sure you read the fine print Thursday the 14th of November, we have Venus, the love planet, in Sagittarius. So Venus in Sagittarius just wants to explore and travel and broaden her horizons. And you will feel a sense of adventure. And if you do any of those activities, you will absolutely love doing that. It forms a... It forms a... Not a... What's the opposite of harmonious? Uh... Discord. There's discord between Venus and Neptune and Pisces. So the love planet and Neptune, the higher octave of the love planet, are at odds with each other. So that's not good relationship-wise. The Gemini moon opposes Venus and Sagittarius as well. So thinking and words are much more important than the feeling and the heart. So if you think that, you can potentially really hurt other people's feelings, so really be careful on Thursday. Um, the Gemini moon also squares Neptune in Pisces, so that's at odds with Neptune. And it forms a positive relationship, a quincux, with Mercury in Scorpio, which is the communication planet in retrograde, which causes you to say the wrong thing at the wrong time. And at the same time, you've got this great desire to say things. So. Thursday may be, a, may be complicated in relationships because you're so inconsiderate. Be considerate deliberately on Thursday. If you're someone who's codependent and who's always ultra, ultra, ultra considerate, Thursday is your day to break out of that codependent cycle, out of that codependent relationship. Mercury is in retrograde. Excuse me. There is the potential, the major potential, to misunderstand a friend or a partner. And when this misunderstanding occurs, rather than just saying, um, and mulling it over, no. You immediately go to war over it and you will want to end the relationship altogether. Cut them off. <laughs> Way too extreme. So... Really don't do anything extreme like that. If you're acting in an extreme way, you'll know that this retrograde has hooked you and that you've fallen for it. Thursday is also a great day to and an opportunity to learn how to listen and to deliberately not say as much on that day and to deliberately listen to the people around you. It's so interesting when you stop speaking and you just let people get on with their conversations. It's amazing what comes out. It's, it's a, that's a great tool to just let people speak and let them show you who they are and you don't have to say a word. So all of these things, because we live on planet duality, Anything that is negative has a positive to it. Every cloud has a silver lining. So if you can't assert yourself or you struggle with it, Thursday you won't struggle 
with asserting yourself. And use that if you have an area of your life that is broken and that be, can be fixed by you asserting yourself and making changes, then do that. Mercury retrograde is also about finding new ways of communicating and new ways of seeing the world. So it's a positive thing in many ways because it allows us to make changes to the way we articulate and the way we live. So if it wasn't for Mercury retro retrograde, you know, moving and buses and transports and communication, all of that stuff is ruled by that planet. And because it goes retrograde three or four times a year, it deliberately causes misunderstanding so that you can grow. So Thursday, really listen, find that new perspective, see them with new eyes because you're actually listening for once. And that will enable you to really become closer with that person and to really build a stronger relationship. On Friday the 15th of November, we have the moon going into Cancer at 4.16 in the afternoon. Cancer is nurturing, it's a water sign, it's very much about the family and the domestic sphere. And the moon is how you feel. It rules Cancer. So you're very content, you're nurturing, you're considerate. All of those things that you want the day before, so you can see how there's extreme flips here in the week and you have to pay attention to that because for the Thursday the 14th is like you're a tank bulldozing your will into the world and on Friday you're a darling you're as sweet as a little kitten so the Cancer Moon sextiles Uranus and Taurus Uranus is chaos and the unpredictable and that is in Taurus and the last time it was in Taurus was in the 1930s. It's going to stay in Taurus until 2026 and it can create total chaos in practical things uh, it, on the earth. It can create earthquakes. Um, the stock market to massively grow and succeed. It doesn't just all have to be negative. It can be amazing miracles that come. Um, it could be that another bit of the um, Antarctic ice uh, glaciers falls off and the sea level rises and there's some villages have to be abandoned. That's the kind of physical change this can have. Um, but it can also have an effect on your love life, on your relationships, on your work, and on your physical being. The Cancer Moon also squares, so it's at odds with Chiron and Aries. So it's unlikely that you're going to get hurt today. Friday is, it's a bit 50-50. If you meet someone and instantly fall in love, you could either break your heart because it's the wrong person or you could be with your soulmate. You don't know because Uranus is totally unpredictable and we have Mercury retrograde. So you don't know if you're going to still see the person in this loving light in five days from Friday because that's when Mercury goes direct. So I know when you have these amazing feelings, it's like, oh my God, this is the one. It's difficult to put restraints on a new relationship like that. But if you possibly can, then keep it cool. Or even if it's a new business relationship, don't rush into anything. Keep it cool. Say, I need my time to think about this. Let me sleep on it. I need to, you know, mull this over. And don't sign anything if you possibly can avoid it on Friday the 15th. Because not only do we have Mercury in retrograde, but we've also got chaos now. Potentially screwing things up. Okay. So take your time. And it's a day to take care of yourself and to fall in love with yourself and to nurture yourself rather than, than 
looking externally because I mean let's let's use common sense here and read between the lines okay if you happen to fall in love with this amazing person and Uranus in Taurus is sitting on you and Mercury is in retrograde it's really likely that that's not going to work out I mean you may be the exception and it's like amazing but it's really unlikely so if this person comes into your life on Friday, it's a mirage, okay? Think of Friday and ask yourself, is this real? Or is this me just looking at it in my own blinkered way? So try and be as open as you possibly can. Open-minded. Open-minded. Saturday, the 16th of November, the Cancer Moon. So you're still in nurturing mode. That forms a positive trine with the communication planet Mercury, which is in Scorpio, and Neptune, the water planet of dreams and love, and intuition, which is in Pisces. Fabulous. The Cancer Moon also opposes, so it's 180 degrees away from Pluto in Capricorn. The Phoenix rising from the ashes changes to your physical circumstances. So... It's, again, a total change of energy. It's really extreme because Saturday, now we're talking about really relaxing and just giving yourself the chance to put your feet up and to enjoy the day. Uh, all the hard workers, you know, the people who work themselves to the bone, who do 70, 80 hour weeks. Even if you have to work today, if you can possibly, possibly adjust your schedule, it's not going to affect your business badly or your job badly if you decide to take a personal day here, use one of your holiday days if you're working, or if you're retired, then this is a day that if you rest and if you connect with yourself and the land, nature, Taurus, remember, is the bull, is earth. If you connect with nature, so if you just go for a walk or if you're feeling super strong, then go for a hike or something like that. It's really a wonderful opportunity to rest your body, your soul, your mind, your spirit. It's a great day to recharge your batteries. And when you're recharging your batteries or you want to recharge your batteries and you're forced to give and give and give, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Something has to give. So do yourself a favor and if you possibly, possibly can, make your schedule for Saturday as light as it can possibly be. So... If you're a student at university, if you're retired, if you're working, it's a wonderful day to relax, to be sensual, to be nurturing, to be intimate, to like on Monday, to share secrets that you thought you were going to take to the grave and to let go of that guilt. And it's really a day to absolutely draw a line under what's happened Control, Alt, Delete. That's in the past. I'm sucking up new energy. It's like a new moon almost this Saturday. And I'm recharging my batteries. And I'm really healing and resting on this day. So I'll go to a spa or something. Or have a massage on Saturday if you can afford it. Really treat yourself. You'll really, really, really benefit from it. I went to a meditation retreat. A transcendental meditation retreat in some really obscure town in the north in S. It starts with S. I can't remember. But all we did the weekend was meditate. We just meditated the whole weekend. And I went back to work on Monday and I got things done like this and I was buzzing and I was running around because I meditated the whole weekend and I had so recharged my batteries. It was amazing. So you Saturday, really, it's, it's just one of those fabulous, fabulous days where you can recharge your batteries. Sunday, the 17th of November, we've got the moon going into Leo at 9.58 in the evening. So the moon in Leo, you feel much more confident and boom. 
It's, it happens in the evening though, so it's still in cancer for most of the day. So you're still pretty much nurturing and intuitive and creative. The Leo Moon trines Chiron and Aries. So if you play Hulk Hogan, if you play the big Kahuna cheeseburger, whatever it is, um, you're likely to get hurt. There, there are two days when your lips, your mouth can get you into trouble and can get you hurt. And Sunday is one of those days. Alright, so be careful. Listen rather than speak all the time. I think that's a good rule of thumb for this week. If, if there's a choice, if you have, if you get into a situation where it's like, okay, I can either listen or I can speak up, listen. It also squares, the Leo moon, it squares Uranus and Taurus, so chaos is involved again here on Sunday. So Sunday is another one of those 50-50 days due to Uranus. You can't predict chaos and and um, the unexpected because that's what it is it's unexpected and it can either be great or it can be bad so if you look at work on Sunday and you decide to write a speech that you're going to deliver the next day it can either be the best speech of your life and motivate and inspire others or it can be a total flop like the relationship situation earlier in the week where you meet someone and it just seems perfect and here for instance your speech seems perfect but then when it comes to delivery it's like uh uh wah, wah. and when mercury goes direct and you look at the guy and you're like what was i thinking yikes so again common sense gauge the atmosphere if everything feels positive and let's say you're a performer, okay? And the audience is buzzing and is positive. And you feel positive and you have butterflies in your stomach and you're nervous. <clears throat> and you're going to sing and you go out there and you do the best performance of your life, really. Like Judy at Carnegie Hall, okay? Once in a lifetime. Or you feel that the audience is ill at ease and there's... There's a little bit of rumbling and you and yourself feel a little bit negative. Then I'm seriously, seriously advising you, if you're a performer, to listen to your feelings and to listen to your gut because you can either achieve the greatest masterpiece of your career so far or you can have a complete disaster today. It's really extreme. So you have to gauge the situation by putting your feelers out and determining what the outcome is likely to be. Because all you have to do is take a test of the mood that is in the air. If it's negative or cranky, it's better to cancel the performance than to fall on your face publicly. Because then that is going to be remembered forever. If you're retired and you um, are meeting your grandchildren for the first time today, it's not the best day to do that because everything is so extreme. Wait until Mercury goes direct. If you are, if you have met the new guy. Um, take it slow and go on a couple of dates and um, string her along or string him along a little bit until you know the end of November so you can get a proper idea of it or if you're offered a job you know or if, like an opportunity comes along I'm gonna think about it I'm gonna listen and read and look at it and don't let yourself be bullied and pressed into anything that you don't want to do because the problem is that you can't rely on your perception of things. And that's why people who have a spiritual practice in their life have one up on people who don't because their higher self guides them and gives them guidance from within here and they can use this as a resource rather than 
just this. So this week is all about the heart and using this and it's very much about trying to keep it zipped unless you feel like, oh my God, this is going to be the masterpiece on Saturday, on Sunday. Yes, on Saturday and Sunday. If you feel it, then go for it. But if it feels negative, no. So there we go. It is a um, full-on week. It does have major ups and downs, but there is huge breakthrough potential in each one of these days. And the days are very, very different. So you might feel a little bit like uncomfortable because everything is just changing so fast and heavily. It may be like, okay, today we're like looking at emotions, like, okay, <laughs> you know, it's like, all right, I'm trying to keep up here, but it's really quick. So that's why this day here is also on Saturday that you can relax and chill or create the masterpiece, but you can really recharge your batteries and the important thing is that you have the choice today and of this week. You choose what you do. You don't let yourself get pushed or bullied or pressured into something, especially if you aren't clear on everything. Because sometimes in business or in friendships, you're asked to wing something. You don't have the whole story, but someone asks you to do it and you just do it because you trust them. You wing it and you pass something on. Turns out to be completely incorrect. You get blamed for it. And that's the kind of thing that happens during Mercury retrograde. So even if there wasn't any mal, mis, mal intent, things can still go wrong. So it's very important, especially this week, to be considerate and l let people show you who they are. Listen to them talk. It's really interesting. Have a fabulous week. If you would like a personal reading with me, please visit my website. It's gregoryscott.com. In my personal readings, I use astrology, tarot, numerology, and by using those divination systems, it opens up a doorway for me to access my intuition and I get messages from spirit by using these divination tools. So I'm an intuitive astrologer. To draw up your chart, I need your place of birth, date of birth, and time of birth. If you don't have the time of birth, then please order a chart rectification with me. That's the process where you work, where I work out your time of birth. You give me 10 or more life events and I can work that out. Um, once I have the chart, I can really answer any questions you may have about past lifetimes, what your soul mission is this time around what you're talented at when it comes to work or doing the work in your um, in, in your later years when you're retired. What is it that is your passion you want to work on? I can see that in the chart. Where are you likely to be hurt and where can you work on yourself? Um, strengths and weaknesses, where to live, when the best time is to move, love, money, anything really. If you have any questions, get in touch with me. And when you go to Gregory Scott, you can either click on the book your readings now button on the front page, and that will take you straight there. Or you can click on the shop tab, and you can see the different readings that are available there. Okay. I'm also having the Gregory Scott Tarot made exquisitely by Lo Scarabeo, the Italian publisher. And we're not sure yet when they're going to be out but um, they're available for pre-order on the website because it's the first time we're printing. So we've ordered a very limited amount. So if you do want the Gregory Scott Tarot, please head over to the shop section, order the tarot or order your reading with me if you do have questions. I hope you have a lovely week. If you like this video, then please hit the subscribe button and share it online. That would be super, for me and the channel, I want to say every, I want to say thank you to everyone on this channel. I remember I made a video when I had 4,000 subscribers and I did a thank you video saying, this is beyond my wildest dreams. Thank you so much. And what 
you guys have built here with me on YouTube is one of the biggest achievements of my life. I'm really proud of what we're doing here and it's a community of seekers of such beautiful lovely people so when you subscribe to this channel you don't just get me you get this amazing group of people who are all on the path and who want to do good and have meaning in their lives yikes i'm just going on and on now so if you're interested head over to gregoryscott.com have a great week and i will speak to you for the daily tarot readings check those out if you haven't already i also do monthly horoscope for each sign of the zodiac so this is for everyone i do each sign and i've also done each sign of the zodiac for 2020 and 2021 well the beginning of 2021 so have a look at that that's the yearly forecast for your sign watch the one for your sun sign first then the one for your rising sign and you ought to have enough information by then but if you really feel you need more information then also watch the one on your moon sign all right so that's what i get this week i hope you have a wonderful time and i hope you use these opportunities to grow and also if something goes wrong don't criticize yourself okay be gentle on yourself and if you have to beat yourself up then use a feather okay not a, don't beat yourself with a stick just thank yourself for taking such good care of you and for trying at least you're trying right so that's it i hope you have a lovely week i'm sending you lots of love and kisses and i'll speak to you soon